Would you like to know what the fashion editor of the London Times says will be huge in 2024? What to keep and what to pack away so you can be super stylish at all times? Well, let me talk you through what you need to keep in mind when planning your 2024 wardrobe using this article as a guide. And I'll be linking some of the pieces that we women over 60 may want to consider adding to our closet to make us feel comfortable and stylish. So this article by Harriet Walker, who is the fashion editor of the Times, really piqued my interest because it said, this year's fashion must-haves, you've got them already. Now, Harriet Walker is a very amusing fashion journalist and she starts off the article by saying, it's that time of year once more where the rails of your wardrobe are creaking almost as loudly as your waistband is. This is post-Christmas, right? I'm done with New Year's resolutions involving exercise, aren't we all? But this is a good point in the calendar, she says, to take stock of what you have in your cupboards as you're folding away your Christmas jumpers and your sequined frocks. She goes on to say, chances are there's a lot of denim in there. I think she may be right. Which is good news because this year it's all about jeans and more jeans. So she divides the article into three sections, keep, retrieve and pack away. So let's have a look at the three sections and see whether we agree and whether we have these things in our wardrobe to keep, retrieve or pack away and whether we agree with her choices. So let's first talk about the category keep wearing. So Harriet says we should keep wearing big jeans. Now I have to say I actually did buy a big pair of jeans last year, in fact a couple of pairs, and I ended up selling them because they really didn't suit me. I just found that they made my tum look huge, especially if I tucked something into the waistband, and I just didn't feel comfortable in them. I'm much more comfortable in skinny jeans, but more of those later. But if you do have big jeans, as she calls them, then keep wearing them with impunity. Now she does actually suggest a pair of big jeans from Weekday, which is part of the H&M stable. And I had a look at them online and do you know what? I rather fancy them. And I'll tell you for why, even though I got rid of my big jeans last year, because I was talking to a girlfriend of mine who's quite a bit shorter than me. I'm five foot four. I think she's only five foot one and she never normally wears jeans. But she was telling me earlier this week that she did in fact buy a pair of so-called big jeans and she felt fabulous in them. And her husband said, gosh, you really look so much taller in these jeans. So I was thinking maybe I should get hold of a pair and see whether they can make me look taller. Anyway, if you've got big jeans and you like wearing them, keep on doing so. So the next category that Harriet says we should keep in our wardrobe are trousers. Well, I'm sure we weren't planning to get rid of trousers anytime soon. But what she says is the edict for strides is similarly hard line. Baggy is best, shelve the rest. And she says that goes for cords, tailoring, even the dalliance with cargo pants. Anything slim cut is liable to look dated at this point in the trouser trend cycle. So really what she's saying is baggy jeans and baggy trousers to coin a song by Madness. Now I do have baggy trousers as it happens. I do have a pair of Vince baggy trousers which I bought at, towards the end of last year and I do really like them. Now the next category which is in complete contrast to baggy trousers and baggy jeans, are black leggings. Yes, Harriet says we should be keeping our black leggings, wearing them, and she's even suggesting that you could wear them to the office. Now, that is interesting because I have been wearing leggings to the office, but the leggings that I wear are of quite a thick material, a little bit like jodhpurs, and they've got a seam down the front and pocket, so they're not your traditional leggings. They're more like well, there's no such thing as jeggings. Is there a treggings? I think there might have been, actually. I suppose that's what they are. They're kind of treggings. And I think what's interesting is she talks about wearing black leggings with a longish top. So in other words, a long blazer or a long jumper or a long shirt that hits you mid-thigh because I suppose she doesn't want us exposing anything too intimate. But when she talked about wearing blazers and leggings, it just immediately reminded me of the 90s. I'm sure I used to wear a jacket with probably with shoulder pads and leggings in the days when we also used to wear bodies. Do you remember that? So I'm happy to continue to wear my black legging, my casual ones that I wear at home all the time. So that's great news, isn't it? We should keep wearing our leggings, which we were going to do anyway. Now there is one pair of black leggings that I'm probably going to put away and they're these, my faux leather leggings. 
I tried them on the other day and I just thought, you know, I just don't feel right in them at the moment. And it isn't to do with my age, it really isn't. They just felt a bit sort of, I don't know, a bit sex shop. And that's not to say you shouldn't wear yours if you've got them, of course you should. But they just didn't feel right to me. They just felt a bit Anne Summers. So I'm going to put them in the back of my wardrobe for a little while and see whether I fancy wearing them again in the future. And if I don't, then I shall probably sell them. Now the next category of clothing that we should keep in our wardrobes according to Harriet Walker of the Times are blazers. Now that's quite interesting to me because I bought a blazer towards the end of last year second hand because I had tried on some blazers before and I always looked because they were really baggy last year and the year before. I always felt like I was wearing my granddad's blazer and I just didn't feel right in them but actually the one I have bought second hand I think I only paid about £60 for it from Arquette really lovely blazer. I have actually worn once or twice, although it has to be said not that much, I suppose because I don't go into the office very much at the moment, it doesn't really feel like I need to wear a blazer and I'm not sure what occasion I would actually wear a blazer for, but I like the aesthetic of it so I thought I'd get one and given it was second hand I didn't have to pay a lot for it. But one of the blazers that I'm trying to sell, but of course nobody wants it because it's not fashionable anymore, is this one. And it's a lovely blazer, but as you can see, it's quite fitted and it was fine in 2011 when I think is, is when I bought it. But at the moment, no one wants to wear sort of nipped in waist blazers, do they? In fact, Harriet particularly mentions that that's the sort of blazer you don't want. Now, the next item of clothing that we should keep in our wardrobes, according to the Times, are shirts. Now, I don't really own any shirts. In fact, I've never been much of a shirt fan. I think because the material of shirts tends to be poplin, which is not very forgiving. It's not very soft, it's quite crisp. And I find it quite cold on my skin. I don't find it sort of warm and yielding. If a shirt can be yielding, if you know what I mean. So I've actually always preferred softer fabrics and they're not usually shirt material, are they? However, I have been thinking about buying a shirt and actually my lovely friend Tina of Tina's Best Midlife on YouTube, she recently bought a man's shirt. And if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I do advocate buying some men's clothes, at least that's what I've been doing lately. So men's sweaters or cardigans, which I've had great success with because sometimes the colors are more my cup of tea, they're less pastel and deeper, which is more my sort of coloring. So then I thought I'd venture into the men's shirt arena and I bought this. Look at this beautiful shirt. Now actually I can see on screen it looks even more purple than it actually is. It's more of an aubergine in real life. And I bought this for the princely sum of four pounds on Vinted. Four pounds! I mean you can't get anything for four pounds, not even two whole coffees. Isn't it absolutely lovely? I haven't worn it yet but I'm looking forward to wearing it and honestly for four pounds I think it's an absolute steal. But what I want to do is wear it with the collar done up because I think that's quite a nice aesthetic in my sort of quest to be a little bit more edgy in my clothing choices. So I do think I'm gonna give shirts a go. Now the only caveat I would say, particularly at this time of year, is I'd have to wear a base layer underneath it because it wouldn't be warm enough. So if you've got some shirts, carry on wearing them. Now the next category is really interesting to me and those of you who watched me before will know, the category is actually just called black. And Harriet says, if all these rules are leaving you flustered, just wear black head to toe with silver earrings to liven up your skin. I mean, that could have been written for me. I wear a lot of black and I also wear silver earrings. So thank you, Harriet, for that endorsement. I shall carry on doing so. Now, the next category is cowboy boots. I've never owned a pair of cowboy boots, I don't believe. But if you have a pair and you love wearing them, keep wearing them. Now, the final item that Harriet suggests we keep wearing are kitten heels. No, just no, not for me. If you've got a pair of kitten heels or more than one pair and you love wearing them, you can keep wearing them. But oh my goodness, for us women over 60, no way, Jose, I just wouldn't go near a pair of kitten heels. Now I have worn kitten heels in the past, but probably not for 10 years or more. And I used to love them because they weren't very high. 
but honestly the idea of wearing a kitten heel now that that tiny little heel that might make me trip over at any moment no way I just could not do it so that's definitely a fashion trend that I'll be ignoring this year now let's go on to the second category which is retrieve so this is the category of items of clothing that you may have put to the back of your wardrobe that you haven't been wearing for a while which the time suggests you can now wear and the first item is midi skirts satin slips especially well, I must say I'm quite surprised about that because I thought everybody was wearing them anyway so I didn't know they'd even gone out of style now I don't own a satin slip skirt and they don't really suit me in fact I don't own any skirts except one which I bought it towards the end of last year and it's this one from Uniqlo now this was quite a big deal for me because as I say I don't wear skirts because my middle is really quite big and I just don't like drawing attention to it and I find they just don't suit my shape at all and I'm not sure that skirt qualifies as mid-length for me because I'm quite short but I did really enjoy wearing it and I wore it with a black polar neck and a belt and I thought it looked pretty good so I definitely will continue to wear this skirt which was already in my wardrobe anyway so I didn't have to retrieve it <laughs> and so should you if you love wearing skirts now the next category that the Times suggests we retrieve from the back of our wardrobe are grown-up handbags. Now what the article means by that is tote bags. Now I only have one like that and it's this one here from Mulberry and I do use it but maybe not as often as I perhaps should. Partly because it's a shoulder bag I suppose and I do have to be a bit careful. My posture is quite bad and I don't really like carrying very heavy things on one shoulder. And the reason that the article suggests we need to retrieve these bags is because if we are still working, then we tend to hot desk. And that's what I have to do. I don't have a designated desk, so I have to bring my laptop in each time I come to work. Now, it must be said, lately I've been using a cloth bag for it because I like to wear a little crossbody bag to get my cards out when I'm traveling. Even in my crossbody, I still struggle to find my keys or my card so I don't know whether I will go back to wearing a tote bag actually. Now the next item that apparently we're supposed to retrieve from our closets are the Mac combo which effectively means an open Mac with jeans and a top. Now I'll tell you something I'm never going to buy another Mac never ever ever because they look awful on me. It's fine if it's undone but if you do it up with a belt which to be honest in this climate that's what you need a mat for, to keep the rain off and to keep you warm. What's the point of having it hanging down? Yeah, it looks fashionable, but what's the point of that? I'm never going to buy a Mac again. Nor will I probably be wearing the next category, which is suggested we retrieve from our wardrobes, and that's a bomber jacket. Now, I do actually have a bomber jacket, which Mr. Des, bless his heart, bought for me years ago. And at the time, I did quite like it. This is it here, and it is absolutely beautiful. I think it's a, it's a weekend by Max Mara. So a very pricey bomber jacket, and it's beautifully lined. It's absolutely stunning, but it's just... It probably needs to be a bigger size now anyway, but I just don't feel comfortable in it. And to be honest, I don't know when to wear it or what to wear it with. Now, interestingly, Harriet doesn't suggest how to wear it. So I'm not sure that it would be that useful an item of clothing unless it was oversized and you could wear something warm underneath it or a t-shirt. But otherwise, I probably wouldn't bother. Now, the next item of clothing is something red. Well, hello. I, I've only just bought this a few months ago. So we can carry on wearing red or we can retrieve it if we haven't been wearing it lately. Now, this is kind of an aubergine red. It's not really a red because I find it difficult to find a shade of red that suits me, even though I have my colours done. Actually finding an item of clothing in the shades of red that suit me is actually really difficult so this is the best I could do and I do really love wearing this but I think this is a colour for autumn winter I'm not sure I'd be wearing this in the spring and I might well look for another red item I am trying to bring a few more colours into my wardrobe and not just stick to blacks browns and navy blues and greys actually but I certainly don't have any other items to retrieve now the next item of clothing we we can retrieve from our wardrobes are loafers and sling bags. Again, I'm very surprised that anyone would have put a loafer in the back of their wardrobe. So bring out your loafers if you've got any. Sling bags, they're not for me because I've got very narrow ankles and they tend to slip off the back of my ankle. But if you've got a sling back, fish it out. Now, the next item, hiking boots. Do you have any? 
I mean, I've got some, but they are actually for hiking. And the closest I can get to something fashionable in the sort of hiking sphere, as it were, are these trainers, which I bought a few years ago. And I do love them, but I really do keep them for walking on the beach, on a shingle beach. I don't tend to wear them that much unless I'm just popping to the corner shop or something. But if you've got hiking boots and you haven't been wearing them of late, fish them out. And that's because the next category is what you need to pack away. And Harriet rather controversially says, pack away your biker boots. Now I don't own any biker boots and that's partly because I've struggled to find a pair that don't have any hardware on them or too much hardware, because I don't like all that shininess. I don't, I don't find it attractive on me when I look down at my feet. I like something fairly simple and pared down. But apparently biker boots are not a thing anymore. However, Harriet does say in her article, regardless of what those at the cutting edge might say, I suspect I will still be wearing mine on the weekend with cropped jeans. Now she's saying we should put away our cropped jeans. I don't actually own any myself because these plus biker boots have become a sort of cold weather uniform. Well, I must admit, I didn't know this, but if you've got cropped jeans and you don't want to look unfashionable in 2024, heaven forfend, then maybe put them away till next year when they'll probably be fashionable again. Now, this is super controversial in my book. You're supposed to put away your white trainers. Now, Harriet, why did you tell me that? I've just bought a pair of white trainers specifically to wear with my tailored trousers. Look at these beauties. I absolutely love them. Now, it has to be said I haven't actually worn them out yet, but I'm really looking forward to wearing them with my tailored trousers and possibly my jeans. I actually saw these on my daughter and I thought, God, they look absolutely fantastic. And she wears a lot of leggings and tailored trousers and she's in an office regularly and she looks fabulous in them. So I thought, well, I'm going to get a pair. And actually, I managed to get these on sale for only £50, which I thought was pretty good. They're Palermo by Puma. Really comfortable. So I am looking forward to wearing these. And I'll not be packing them away. I'll be wearing them on repeat. Now, even more controversially, the next item we're supposed to pack away are Birkenstocks. No! I have two pairs. I have these and I have a black pair. And I'm just about to pack these for my holiday. Now, to be fair, she's suggesting that we don't wear them in the winter. And actually there was a trend, wasn't there, of wearing socks with your Birkenstocks, which I thought was slightly strange. In fact, I tried it out once. And Mr. Des was like, what? What are you doing? I kind of leaned into it for a little while. But yeah, I didn't, I haven't carried on with it. I just thought it'd be a bit of fun just to see people's reactions. You're not going to be wearing those kind of sandals in the winter, are you? Let's face it. So I think she's suggesting just wait until the summer, but I think we'd all do that anyway, wouldn't we? And the final item of clothing that we're supposed to pack away are dresses. Now, in this instance, I think what Harriet is talking about are those long floral dresses with white trainers, the sort of prairie dresses. Now, I've never owned one of those because I really don't suit them at all. I mean, yes, I did back in the day when we all wore Laura Ashley, but that was in the 70s and 80s. But I really don't suit them anyway, and so I certainly wouldn't be wearing them now. But honestly, if you love wearing them, why wouldn't you? And if you feel comfortable in them, then by all means wear them. But I understand every other woman on the street in the summer would be wearing a floral dress and white trainers. And actually what she does say is that every single person at every single brand, shop or trend forecasting agency I've spoken to over the past year has said the same thing. Beyond summer and special occasions, not only not wearing the ones they have, they're not buying any new ones either. So she's saying forego the frills and flounces and try black, navy, dark green, cream or denim. Now, interestingly, of course, I have black. In fact, I bought it last summer. I bought a black long t-shirt dress and I've got a green one and I've got a blue one. Now, they will be for the summer. I wouldn't be wearing those in the winter anyway, but I know what she means. There just have been rather a lot of floral dresses around this past year. And her suggestion is to relegate those to the back of the wardrobe when no doubt they will come back into fashion sometime in the future. So there you have it. Those are the fashion must-haves that you've already got in your closet. So let me know in the comments below. Are you going to put away that floral dress? Keep wearing your black leggings? Retrieving your slingbacks? Let me know. I'd love to know what you think. Of course, the Times article has some tongue-in-cheekness about it, but I really enjoyed reading it and 
using it as a guide to think about what I might want to take forward into 2024, not just in the winter, because of course we're in midwinter now in the UK, but also going forward into the spring, summer and beyond. And if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel, giving this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and hitting the notification bell. And if you'd like more tips and tricks on fashion, makeup and skincare, then I have a monthly newsletter and the link to subscribe is in the description box below. And in that, I don't just talk about fashion, beauty and lifestyle, but also music, films, books, podcasts, other content creators, and all the other bits and bobs that make us happy. And thank you so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me, it really does. And I hope you're all doing really well and looking forward to 2024 with excitement. And I'll look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.